Colo with DiscountJuicers.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you, and I'm excited today to be doing another juice off where you guys are going to get to see two juicers compared side by side, juicing the same exact amount of produce. And today we're juicing one of America's favorite juices to drink. That's a good old OJ or orange juice, or in my case, orange Julius. Now that's a whole other video. But uh, orange juice is probably the most drank. Uh, juice in the US. I mean, since we're all kids, we always had orange juice for breakfast. It, but it's really sad, you know, when I was a kid, I, we drank a lot of concentrate orange juice, you know, from frozen, and nowadays you get it in a little carton, and those juices have been pasteurized. They also may have other additives, such as extra corn syrup or sugars or preservatives and other things in there. Plus, they've been pasteurized and heated to assure that there's no bacterial contamination. And uh, when they do all these things, it lowers the amount of nutrition in there. More specifically, uh, some of the most important nutrients in the orange juice you're drinking are the antioxidants, you know, the vitamin C, the hesperidin, the rutin, that's in the white pithy part of the skin. And actually, most orange juices aren't even a full orange juice. They're literally an orange water. John, wait, man, I've been drinking orange water all these years, and you're going to make an orange juice. What's the difference? Well, let me go ahead and show you guys. Today, what we're going to juice, actually, is the navel oranges. Navel oranges are best juiced in the slow juicers or other uh, fruit and vegetable-based juicers. Now, if you want to make a standard orange juice with, like, the reamer that goes rrr, 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 or a press-style machine, um, then you want to use a different kind of orange that we have here. So we have a... Uh, Valencia orange. So the Valencia oranges are best for actually uh, pressing out or putting on a reamer and the navels are better for uh, this kind of juicing with the slow juicers. Once again, by using the Valencias, we're going to make an orange water and how most orange juices are created, they simply take the orange, they cut it in half and then literally what they do is they squeeze out all the juice. So you can see here I'm just literally squeezing out all the juice of this Valencia orange, and yeah, it's actually pretty efficient to do that, and I got a pretty ripe orange, and I'm like, Arnold Schwarzenegger, man, I'm so strong, I can squeeze the juice out that orange. Look at that. Nice cup of orange juice. Mmm. Got to see. That's pretty good, but that's what most orange juices are. Now, uh, what I want you guys to do is to use your juice extractors and extract more than just the orange water. I want you to get all the nutrients bioflavonoids, antioxidants, phytonutrients, and phytochemicals that are contained in the most of the orange. Now, where is that? Now, you guys may have heard when you're a kid, like if you're eating apples, most of the nutrition is in the skin of the apple. Yes, that's right. So the closer you get to the skin, that's where the most nutrition is, and it's the same in an orange. Now, unfortunately, on things like oranges, tangerines, and grapefruits, we cannot simply eat the skin of an orange. When's the last time you saw somebody bite into an orange like this? <sighs> no, you don't do that, man. You always peel the orange first. And now this is because, for a very important reason, in the outside orange coloring, there are indigestible chemicals in there that will give you bad gas, flatulence, and bloating. And also, they don't taste so good either. They kind of have like that citrus orange flavor. I mean, if you're a chef, you might use a little bit for an orange zest to give that zest, but you wouldn't eat or consume a large quantity of that stuff. But what is really good is not the orange coloring per se, but what we want is that white pithy part that's right below the skin. So how I prepare oranges to juice them in the juicers are I'll basically take and I'll cut off one end, I'll cut off the other end, then I'll put the orange on the side there, then I'll just go with my knife and I'll just shave down all the orange coloring. Now you can also easily do a, this with a potato peeler or something like that. I happen to like a knife. It actually works uh, fairly efficient. And what you want to do is you want to remove as much orange coloring as you can while keeping as much white as you can. And uh, this is working pretty good. I could do an uh, orange actually fairly quickly in this way as you guys can see I got most of it missing a little bit on the bottom so we're going to take the knife here and go along the bottom to get all that orange coloring off you wouldn't want to necessarily juice that stuff and clean that up a little bit and there we go that's what it looks like so here's an un you know trimmed orange and here's a trimmed orange ready for juicing you know I've uh, retained most of the 
white pithy part that has the most nutrition of the entire orange. Plus, in addition, uh, when you're juicing the white part of the orange, it's not going to make it super sweet. It's going to kind of dilute it because the if you try to eat the white pithy part on its own, it doesn't taste so good. It just kind of has like a neutral flavor, not so sweet. But when you juice it and you get the white pithy part with the orange juice, then it totally balances it out. It makes the orange juice more mellow, not quite as acidic, and a lot more nutrient dense. So that's what we're going to juice today. We're going to juice oranges that have been uh, basically de-skinned in both these juicers. I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut up and uh, weigh out equal amounts of the oranges, and we'll be back at you to show you you guys the weigh-in. Now we're going to do the weigh-ins for you guys. Over on this side, we got the Omega NC800. This is a horizontal slow auger machine, 15-year warranty, uh, larger feed chute than predecessor models. And uh, check it out on the scale we got. Looks like we got 3.468 pounds. That's seven navel oranges that have been uh, basically the skin removed. So over on this side, we got the Tribest Slow Star Juicer. This is a vertical single auger machine. Runs at actually 47 RPMs and has a 10-year warranty. And uh, we got, once again, seven oranges, uh, navels that have been uh, skinned. And we got the weight is 3.468. Alright, so now that we're weighed in, we're going to go over each one of these machines a little bit more in detail. Let me go ahead and get these uh, scales out of here since we don't need them anymore. So now that we got the weigh in, what we're going to do is we're going to go over these juicers just a little bit more. You know, I do have videos that I've made in the past and I'll put a link down below this video where I compare these juicers and side by side, uh, you know, tests previously. But I've never juiced oranges in them. Now, one of the things that people don't understand is that, you know, there's a juicer that may be best for you. Every juicer is a little bit different. Like, if you're a lady, how many pairs of shoes do you own? And if you're a guy, how many screwdrivers do you have, right? You got a, if you're a lady, you got a pair of shoes for every different outfit, for every different occasion. If you're a guy, you got a screwdriver, you know, for every different screw you're going to unscrew, whether that's a Phillips bit, a straight slot, a Torx, you know, the square bit, you know, whatever. And I see juicers like that too. Certain juicers are better for certain occasions or certain juicing certain items, you know, if you're a guy. And, uh, you know, that's why it's very important if you're only getting one juicer to pick the juicer that's going to be most of your needs. Like, I know if you're a lady, right, you might be able to have like one shoe, your flats, work for a lot of things, but won't work for some things, but you could use it most of the time. And if you're a guy, you know, I kind of like a straight slot that's a little bit smaller. Sometimes I could get it in a square bit. Sometimes I could use it in a, you know, a, in place of a Phillips head, you know, and, and like that. So juices are like that too. You could get probably a juice that's going to meet your needs. That's going to do a wide variety of things. But you want to make sure that when you buy a juicer, you get a juicer that's going to be really good at what you're going to juice most. So I don't know if you want to juice oranges the most. You're going to find out in this video which one of these juicers do oranges the best. In my previous videos, I have done comparisons when I'm juicing, you know, uh, leafy greens and other things. And in general, what I'm going to tell you is this. In general, the horizontal auger style machines always juice the leafy greens the best. Period. <laughs> so, if you want to juice like John, I want to juice the majority of what I'm juicing is leafy greens. Well, then you want to get something like the Omega NC800, which is my favorite horizontal uh, auger juicer at this time. Now, if you're one of those people, John, I want to juice some leafy greens, but I want to juice a whole bunch of everything, man, including fruits and hard vegetables and leafy greens, well, then you might want to go for the Slow Star, because the Slow Star is probably better at juicing the fruits and uh, some of the hard vegetables, and it's also a little more convenient, in my opinion. I mean, every juicer has their pros and cons. That's why I make these videos so that you guys can see which one may be the best for you. So a few of the things I want to go over about these machines is that they both are slow running machines. This happens to be the slowest running juicer that's available at present time in the US. Runs at 47 RPMs. Generally the lower the RPMs or that's how fast it spins, revolutions per minute, um, the higher the nutrition you're going to get. Uh, the Omega NC800 runs at 80 RPMs. So that's not much faster. I wouldn't think there's magnitudes difference in the nutrition. The main difference is, you know, anything around 100 RPMs and below are considered slow juices and anything above that, like 3,000 on up, you know, 1,700 on up, 
Those are called high speed juicers and the high speed machines run at a much faster pace. In general, they're louder and they also tend to oxidize the food more or oxidize the juice more so that you get lower nutrition in the juice that you're creating. So for that reason, 99% of the time I use the slow machines in my household. I mean, these are just the latest designs and those are the ones that I choose to use. Um, in addition, both these guys have long warranties. So the Slow Star has a 10 year warranty. The Omega NC800 has the longest warranty in the juicing industry, which is 15 years. So that's simply amazing. Think if your cell phone had a warranty for 15 years, right? You literally would never have to buy another cell phone again. And that's how it is when you buy a good juicer. You know, I can't say enough about sticking with one of the major brands of juicers. There's so many different knockoffs these days coming out of China. Both these machines are actually made in Korea that, you know, in my tests have not performed as well as some of the, the legitimate brands and high-end brands, and that's the ones that we choose to offer at Discount Juicers. Yeah. Other than that, if you're a person that doesn't like to have any settings, then the slow start is good because there's nothing to set. You literally put it together, assemble it, and you're all ready to juice. On the Omega NC800, there is a little dial here on the end that I'll show you guys. And it has a setting from a zero to five, and you'll need to adjust this according to what you're juicing. So for example, if you're juicing something like carrots and leafy greens, you're gonna wanna put it on five. What this does is puts the most back pressure on the uh, pulp inside the machine so that you can extract the most amount of juice and if you're putting it on fruits You may want to put it to like a one which offers the least amount of back pressure The problem is if you put too much back pressure Then it's going to clog up the machine things are going to start coming up the feed chute and it's not going to be ejected So this is one of those things you're going to have to kind of play with it's like when you first learn to ride a bike You might have fell off the first couple times, but once you got on your bike and know how to ride it you could do pretty good. So this is the same way. I think because we're juicing oranges with some of the pith, we're going to crank this down to maybe like a two and a half or so to allow some back pressure, but also to let that pulp uh, flow right out. Another thing that's important for some people is the feed chute size. So I want to show you guys the different feed chute sizes here on both these machines. Here's the feed chute size on the Omega NC800. It's like a nice stadium shape. And then here, it's more of a crescent shape. So the, uh, the feed chute size on the Slow Star Juicer is larger than the Omega NC800. Although the NC800 is larger, the largest feed chute on any horizontal single auger to date. Another feature that's important to me, besides just the juicing and extracting the fiber uh, from the produce you're juicing, is the homogenizing feature or mincing feature as some people call it. This allows you to make things like the nut butters, the frozen banana sorbets where you can literally take ripe bananas, you peel them, you put them in your freezer in a Ziploc bag or a Pyrex you know, glassware, and then you take them out, you put them through the machine with a blank plate, and what this does, this literally mushes everything up, and then it makes like a, like a substitute for ice cream that's 100% bananas and 100% delicious. So in this way, you can make further dietary changes to get some of the processed foods, you know, the ice creams with monodiglycerides and corn syrup and preservatives and all these other ingredients you can't, and I can't pronounce either, that's probably not so good. You know, my whole message to you guys is to get more fruits and vegetables in you, and I'm happy to say that the juices are probably one of my top appliances to do just that. In addition, the homogenizing feature can also be used to make baby foods or for geriatric patients that are unable to chew very well. I mean, why do we give babies baby foods? Because they don't have any teeth yet. Now, because we have teeth, we want to make sure we chew each and every mouthful, you know, about 50 times to turn your food into a mush so that you get optimal digestion. Or just run it through one of these machines with the, the mincing cone on this guy or with a blank plate on this guy so that you can mush up your food and have it in a softer, uh, you know, more broken down texture so that you could get the optimal digestion out of it. In general, I recommend juicing your vegetables but eating your fruits whole or blending them. Uh, today we're juicing the oranges because many people like orange juice and I always want to teach you guys good, better, best. You know, you always want to do the best you can. I mean, obviously an orange juice made with fresh oranges is better than a packaged or bottled orange juice, right? Which is better than a Coca-Cola. 
And you want to do the best you can. Any way you can get more fruits and vegetables in you, I think, is a good thing. So now let's get into the juice off because these oranges won't fit into the feed chute. So these machines, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to cut these up into smaller pieces. Now it's very important when using any slow juicer is to not cram things in the feed chute. My preference is to not use the pusher unless absolutely required. You know, it's best to let things, uh, let gravity take the produce drop it in the machine, let the machine work at it at its slow and even pace. If you start cramming things in and using the pusher and trying to push things in too fast, it's like you trying to stuff your mouth full with another cookie when your mouth is already full of cookies. And it's not that I advocate eating cookies, that's just my example today. <laughs> but you can do the same thing with oranges. So anyways, let's go ahead and turn this machine on and uh, juice in the Slow Star machine. We're going to go ahead and cut this in half and probably cut it into each half into three pieces and take one piece and just drop it in the machine. As you guys can see, we got the uh, orange juice coming out over here and some of the pulp is starting to flow out the back end. And this is how I like to use my machines. I like to literally uh, do the cutting and as I'm cutting I'll be also feeding stuff in and I'll uh, then grab another one and then uh, drop another one right in there. And then I'll go ahead and go back to do more cutting. So in this way, I'm letting the machine work without having me to use the pusher. All right, so we're down to our last orange here. I've been probably cutting these actually in a force to make nice small pieces. So I can just drop them in the feed chute and then they basically just uh, drop down in the feed chute. As you guys can see, we got a nice stream of the orange juice coming out. And then over on this side, we got the pulp coming out. Now, don't be alarmed if you have the slow star machine and pulp is not flowing out the entire width of the ejection port Pulp is probably flowing out maybe half of it, and as long as pulp is still moving out, definitely a good thing, it's not backed up and not clogged. One of the reasons why I like juicing the oranges with the pith, not only for the nutrition, but because the all slow juicers require some amount of nice, hard, fibrous material to help the juicer work and to help push all that stuff through the machine. In the slow start, if we just juice the insides, like if you peeled it by hand, it would still work, but might not work as good because the white pithy part is providing a lot of fiber to help eject all this pulp. And uh, this pulp is definitely really dry. Next, we're gonna go ahead and give you guys a close-up shot to show you guys this machine working. So as you guys can see, the pulp is slowly coming out of the machine. And this is uh, definitely good. Now, I have put in the last orange a little while ago and pulp's still flowing. So right after you put in the last orange, you don't wanna just turn off the machine immediately because as long as pulp is still flowing, it's still actually working. Let's go ahead and check out the juice out there. And as you guys can see, we still got juice dripping out of the machine and definitely looks really good. There's the juice. Yes, a little bit of foam was created, but look at that nice, dark, rich orange juice that we made in the Slow Star vertical juicer. So the pulp is pretty much stopped flowing out of the machine. We're gonna go ahead and turn that guy off. Next, we're going to go over and work with the Omega NC800. Now, this feed chute is a little bit smaller, so we may have to cut up the uh, oranges into a little bit smaller pieces. Let's go ahead and turn this guy on and uh, start cutting these oranges up. So we are putting the oranges in, seeing if the machine will self-feed. And on the NC800, you're seeing that the orange is kind of sitting in there but not going down, so we will need to use the pusher. This is going to definitely slow me down a little bit because now I'll have to put the oranges in and then uh, put the pusher in after each uh, segment of orange. So I'm not going to be as efficient as if I was able just to cut and then drop them in there. Maybe I'll put a few pieces in at a time. Alright, so this is working fairly well. We're extracting our orange juice. Looks like the pulp's flowing out fairly well on two and a half. We're going to crank it up to four to see if it still comes out fairly well, if it starts backing up on us. You know, uh, this is something you're gonna definitely have to play with. You know, you don't want it to back up too much, but you don't want the pulp to come out too easy because then you might be missing a little bit of yield there. Let's see, we're gonna take these uh, oranges, just cut them in half, and let's see if I can cram it down in the feed chute to save me a little bit of time. And we are able to do that. And we're gonna go ahead and continue juicing in the Omega NC800. All right, getting down to the end, we just got about, uh, Two more oranges to juice in the NC800. Here it is, last orange NC800. And it looks like the collection cup on the NC800 may not hold as much as on the 
a slow star there. Last orange in the NC800. Let me go ahead and do a close-up shot so you guys can see what it looks like. So there's the pulp coming out of the Omega NC800. And uh, there are the little settings on the top there. The little arrow shows the current setting. And if we look at it from the top, it's pretty much at a four. And it looks like the pulp has been coming out uh, fairly well. And it looks like we have a great big pitcher of uh, orange juice that's filled to the brim literally. And the juicer is pretty much just dripping the last bit of juice out. All right, so the final step, let's go ahead and measure out how much each juicer made. Now to be fair, what we're gonna do is actually we're gonna take the strainers and uh, run the ju juices both through the strainers because if there's extra pulp in the juice, that's not gonna be a fair fight. Uh, before I do that though, let's go ahead and move these guys aside. And I wanna show you guys the pulp and I'm gonna feel the pulp for you guys. Uh, this is more of an expanded pulp and this uh, pulp over on this side on the slow star is more compressed. We're just gonna go ahead and pick up a handful of this stuff in my hand. Nice pulp ball and a handful of this stuff in my hand and uh, we're going to squeeze and as we squeeze as you guys can see I'm not seeing any drops of juice coming out I'm seeing big pieces of the pulp coming out and my hands are barely wet so I mean these two juicers are two of the best juicers of the slow juicers single auger machines that I've ever tested and I'm not surprised that the pulp is very dry now let's check the yields Move these uh, into place here. First we got the slow star juice. These can be a bit of a pain to pour when they're a bit full. Maybe we're gonna go ahead and uh, lift this guy up a little bit. All right, so we got that guy draining through the sieve. By the way, the slow star juicer does include a nice fine stainless steel sieve in with it. The Omega NC800 does not include a sieve. So, you know, if you want a strain juice, which I would recommend because the NC800 does put some pulp in there, uh, you know, you should go down and buy a standard sieve from your local department store or whatnot. All right, next let's go ahead and take the uh, NC800 juice. And I think this is going to be even too much for me to pour out of a, a full container. So I think I'm going to have to basically pour this into something else before we pour it in through the sieve or I'm going to lose too much juice. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this juice here and we're going to pour it into this little pitcher without hopefully losing any. All right. <laughs> now that we got all the juice in here, we could easily pour it through the strainer right here without any spills. Okay, check it out. This is very interesting. It looks like overall the NC800 actually made less pulp in the juice. How do I know this? because we can see how much uh, juice is left in the strainer. Uh, there's significantly less juice in the strainer with the NC800. That means the juice actually went through the strainer. We're going to go ahead and uh, spin this around and see how much pulp is left over after we shake it down. So that means the NC800 made a more pulp-free juice than the Slow Star uh, when juicing the skinned navel oranges. All right, so it looks like there's very little pulp in the NC800. Next, on the Slow Star, there's a fair bit of pulp in there. We're going to go ahead and sh shake this guy around a little bit and try to get all this pulp out. Now, one of the things I'm noticing right off the bat is the color of the pulp that's being caught in the strainers. So I don't know if you guys could see that on the camera there, but the pulp from the Omega NC800 is kind of more like translucent, more like the inside coloring of the orange, you know, like the, the little segments and the little aerials inside there. And the pulp that's being caught by the uh, slow star juicer is more kind of white, so it's more like the pithy fiber stuff that you're seeing on the outside. And if I look at the pulp now, you know, it looks like the NC800 actually just uh, shot more of the white pithy part out into the pulp catch bin and not into the juice where the slow star juicer looked like to me that it was more effective to juice more of that white pithy part and this is no surprise really because in my past tests I have actually seen the slow star is really more effective at grinding up that produce to get all the nutrients you know uh, in each and every cell of the produce you're juicing so it looks like the uh, slow star just from my naked eye may be making a little bit higher yeah, nutrition juice 
That being said, it may not taste as good because the white pithy part, once again, is not as sweet as the, uh, the innards of the orange. So let's see, I think we're pretty much done shaking this down. You're getting shaken down, man, give me all your money. All right, so let me see if I could uh, compress all this fiber into one area of the screen. So basically it looked like to me after we shook all this stuff down that the uh, Slow Star Juicer probably made like, I don't know, like about twice as much, a little bit less than twice as much pulp. Uh, you know, before straining. Now, some of you guys may like that pulpy orange juice, in which case, you actually might like the Slow Star, because it puts more pulp in there to begin with. Next, of course, let's check out the final thing, which is the yield test. One of the most important things. Now let's check out the yields. Let's go ahead and do a close-up shot so you guys can see these on a level playing field. As you guys can see, I mean, the levels are pretty much the same. So actually, I'm going to have to call this a tie. And uh, both these machines with about three and a half pounds of skinned oranges produced one liter of juice. That's 33 uh, ounces approximately. But I want you guys to notice the coloring of the juices if I could get these guys in the same frame at the same time. Once again, over on this side here, we got the Slow Star. And on this side, we got the NC800. Look at the difference. I mean, we juiced in the Slow Star first the Slow Star is a more consistent color, darker juice. And over on the NC800, I don't know if you guys could see that on a camera, but it looks like we got some juicer separation. So for me, the Slow Star juice actually looks more nutritious than the Omega NC800. Uh, next thing is, of course, the taste test. So now for the taste test. First, I'm going to go ahead and try the NC800 juice right into my little glass there. Nice little glass of orange juice for breakfast, better than anything money can buy. Mmm. Nice pulp free juice, a tad bit sweet. I love my orange juice. Mmm. Next, let's go ahead and try the juice made with the Slow Star Juicer. I mean, it's really cool, huh? Both these juicers made the orange juice. They made about equal amounts, but as you guys saw, they totally look different. This one seems a little bit more rich and creamier than the uh, Omega NC800. Mmm. Wow. I like this orange juice much, much better, actually. It's almost like rubbery in your mouth, and it has like a softer feel. It tastes like more rich and full bodied, and I believe that's personally because of the, the white pithy part that the uh, Slow Star ground up and got into the juice, whereas it looks like to me, the NC800, I mean, look at this, like literally sent it out in little in clumps and just smushed out the juice, much more like a, a reamer press than grind it up. Whereas this guy really ground up all the different fibers well to provide a more nutritious juice in my opinion. Mmm. Definitely good. Now I want to bring you guys back to the beginning of this episode where I squeeze that Valencia orange out. We got that orange water that I talked about. We got that right here and I want you guys to look at the colors on that. See the colors on that? The color of the orange water is nice, more dark orange, a little more translucent. Whereas the, uh, the juice made with the rind and all is like a lot more darker and uh, non-translucent and more rich. And this is the kind of stuff that you guys should definitely be drinking. Mmm. I think I'm going to drink the rest of that right now. So I guess in the end, I must declare a winner of this juice off today. And, I mean... This is a really tough juice off for me because both machines produce the same amount of juice with the same amount of produce. That's totally amazing. Now, yes, the Slow Star did make more pulp in the juice. We did have a little more of a challenge to sieve it out. And in the end, I'm going to have to declare the Slow Star the winner. Mainly due to the fact that it did a better job at extracting all the nutrition out of the, the white fibrous rind and literally ground up those pieces into little small 
pieces a lot better than these large chunks in the Omega NC800. This just proves to me that the Slow Star is a much better, uh, you know, juicer in this instance for juicing uh, fruits than the NC800. And this does not surprise me in general. The vertical auger juicers are better and more efficient at fruits while these guys on this side are better at the leafy greens. So be sure to check my other videos where I compare these juicers side by side if you're still wondering which juicer you should get. You know, this time I like the uh, slow start juicer and let me tell you, both these machines sit on my countertop in my kitchen and these are the machines that are my go-to machines. So no matter which one you choose, you can't go wrong because these are the top of the top for the single auger style juicers at this point in time. Be sure to subscribe to my videos if you're not already for future updates on uh, juicing, making recipes, and other appliances that can allow you to eat more fresh fruits and vegetables. Once again, my name is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Be sure to visit DiscountJuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for our YouTube visitors. John Kohler, Discount Juicers. We're going to do the Juicer Year Review 2013. I'm going to share with you guys my favorite juicers and best juicers of 2013. John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you, and I'm excited today to be doing another juice off where you guys are going to get to see two juicers compared side by side, juicing the same exact amount of produce. And today we're juicing one of America's favorite juices to drink. That's the good old OJ or Orange Juice, or in my case, Orange Julius. Now that's a whole other video. But uh, Orange Juice is probably the most drank. Uh, juice in the US. I mean, since we're all kids, we always had orange juice for breakfast. It, but it's really sad, you know, when I was a kid, I, we drank a lot of concentrate orange juice, you know, from frozen, and nowadays you get it in a little carton, and those juices have been pasteurized. They also may have other additives, such as extra corn syrup or sugars or preservatives and other things in there. Plus, they've been pasteurized and heated to assure that there's no bacterial contamination. And uh, when they do all these things, it lowers the amount of nutrition in there. More specifically, uh, some of the most important nutrients in the orange juice you're drinking are the antioxidants, you know, the vitamin C, the hesperidin, the rutin, that's in the white pithy part of the skin. And actually, most orange juices aren't even a full orange juice. They're literally an orange water. John, wait, man, I've been drinking orange water all these years, and you're going to make an orange juice. What's the difference? Well, let me go ahead and show you guys. Today, what we're going to juice, actually, is the navel oranges. Navel oranges are best juiced in the slow juicers or other uh, fruit and vegetable-based juicers. Now, if you want to make a standard orange juice with, like, the reamer that goes rrr, 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 or a press-style machine, um, then you want to use a different kind of orange that we have here. So we have a... Uh, Valencia orange. So the Valencia oranges are best for actually uh, pressing out or putting on a reamer and the navels are better for uh, this kind of juicing with the slow juicers. Once again, by using the Valencias, we're going to make an orange water and how most orange juices are created, they simply take the orange, they cut it in half and then literally what they do is they squeeze out all the juice. So you can see here I'm just literally squeezing out all the juice of this Valencia orange, and yeah, it's actually pretty efficient to do that, and I got a pretty ripe orange, and I'm like, Arnold Schwarzenegger, man, I'm so strong, I can squeeze the juice out that orange. Look at that. Nice cup of orange juice. Mmm. Got to see. That's pretty good, but that's what most orange juices are. Now, uh, when I want you guys to do is to use your juice extractors and extract more than just the orange water. I want you to get all the nutrients bioflavonoids, antioxidants, phytonutrients, and phytochemicals that are contained in the most of the orange. Now, where is that? 